Hey guys, welcome back to Joe's RC Corner, and today we're going to be back on the cricket. I have a short day today. Uh, it's my son's birthday, uh, so we're going to go out to his party. But uh, I wanted to get out here for a little bit and try to get a little bit done. I'm going to show you what we're going to try to get done today. All right, guys, so like I said, we're gonna to try to get a little bit of work done today on the Cricut, and if you guys remember um, in the last video, I talked about this little kink that's in this uh, trailing edge that I'm not really happy with, so I went ahead and called Roger up, and we went and uh, ordered a new trailing edge, and that's right over here. So I wanted to uh, replace it because um, it's a new airplane. Why have a part that is broken or bent? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to match this piece and trim it to match the other one. We're gonna get these in and uh, the plan is then to go ahead and get most of this riveted in place. So we're gonna go ahead and rivet the trailing edge here. We're gonna rivet all of this all the way up to the, uh, the top skin here. Because um, a, a, a viewer mentioned a very good point. Yeah, I can put the, serv the service panel up at the top, but however, if you ever really have to do any serious work on the fuel lines, uh, you're gonna need this panel off. So we're gonna paint that panel separately. Uh, so when we get to that stage, we're gonna paint that as a, as a separate part and then mount it on, on the aircraft. Um, so that's kind of the plan for that. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we're gonna rivet all the way up to this panel here. So all of the bottom will get riveted and finished. And uh, of course the sides here and uh, any of the extra piece rivets that are near the skin, near any of the ribs, we're gonna get those both mounted permanently. So that will be done. We're gonna leave this part open still because I still need to get the top skin uh, on the inboard completed and matched up to the fuselage nicely. So that's gonna be one of our other projects coming up in the near future. Now, let me take you with me. I did reach out to Zenith, or I'm sorry, to uh, Viking. We're gonna go with the four-point harness. So I have those on order. They should be here in uh, next week. Uh, so thank you, Alyssa, for getting those out to me before Sun and Fun. I know you guys are extremely busy getting ready, uh, but I really appreciate you taking the time to get those out, get those out to me. Uh, some of the other things that we went ahead and uh, so we got the so we do have also the uh, fuel line from Viking, which this is going to work out really good. I needed about six feet more, uh, so she hooked me up with that. Um, I did buy an off-brand. Uh, I don't like it. It's a bit stiff. Um, it probably would work, but it's a lot stiffer than the stuff that they're getting. So I'm, I'm gonna have to find out where they're getting it from or just keep buying it from them because, I mean, they know what they're doing. And uh, we really appreciate them uh, taking care of the uh, Zenith community here. So I'll just keep buying it from them. The other thing I went ahead and got, and uh, I need to mount my fuel pressure uh, or my fuel filters. So we have here uh, some Adele clamps that are the right size to hold those in place. We're gonna bolt them in, uh, so that way they're easy to remove for replacement as they get uh, clogged and have problems with them. So, um, and also during maintenance. So, uh, but like I said, this fuel line is too stiff. Uh, I'm not sure I really trust it, so we're not gonna use that. We're gonna use the stuff that we just got from Alyssa and uh, we'll get that mounted in place. Because if you guys remember, we're putting in, getting all the fuel lines uh, started here. And uh, as you can see, I'm running my fuel lines through this top center channel here. And uh, that's gonna make things a lot neater. So I do have to drill out those holes. I'll probably do that tomorrow. I'm not gonna get into a big project like that today. Uh, and then we'll finish up running these fuel lines. Now I did find a uh, gas station here locally uh, that has 88 octane and we're probably going to use them some of that uh, so we're going to fill up the uh, 100 gallon tank with that so that way we can put fuel in the airplane as needed so uh, that's where we are let's get to work guys let's see if we can get something done today 
Okay guys, so welcome back. Uh, didn't do time lapse here, but uh, we got a little bit of work done here. Uh, so we fixed up the rear trailing edge. Uh, so in case anybody didn't notice, uh, didn't know um, on the last video, um, I'm not sure how well it's gonna show up here, but you can see that there's a slight dent here because it, when I was trying to get this in, it fell, get caught, it got caught on one of the, um, flapper on uh, attachment points and it ended up bending and kinking right at that spot and uh, I'll see if it'll focus here but you can see there's a slight kink there and there is a hole in that spot there so I didn't want to use that so I ended up calling Roger getting a new one and we just finished trimming that up and uh, just riveted this in place and uh, Darren Towers thank you for uh, providing these types of uh, 3D printed items here because it holds my trailing edge perfectly at the 80 millimeters uh, and then you can go ahead and mark the holes uh, get them uh, lined up and uh, drilled if you need to to align everything and there you go it's in and they're good so I went ahead and I riveted everything up to here so that way this panel can come off Right, as of right now. And I think I'm gonna do what uh, another viewer mentioned here, and I can't remember your name, I apologize. Uh, but you said the, what you did on yours is you left this as a separate part so it wasn't glued in with uh, paint. So I might do that. Uh, I think that sounds like a really good idea. And uh, we'll do that with that part there. So we're gonna leave this just Clicoed on. Plus, I need to get in there again because uh, my tank, I'm not sure if it's just too far forward or not, but uh, I'm, I'm either going to have to open up these holes a little bit more so that this doesn't vibrate and touch. And I want to put a snap ring around there too. Uh, and that's the same down here. I want to put a snap ring down here. So I'm going to open up the holes to the right size, put a snap ring in there, uh, snap bushing, so that way they don't rub uh, like they are right now. And maybe I have to move my tank that way just a little bit. That means I need to add a little bit more um, of that cork uh, up in the front here. And it's the same on both sides, so it's not like it's different, uh, you know, for anything that's different on this side of the tank, of the uh, fuse of the wing, this wing per se. Uh, they're the same, um, as you can see right here. Uh, it's about the same location, so maybe I need a little bit more. Uh, stuff there to push the tank back. And I'm gonna try that first. And that's why we're not gonna finish up that top there. We're not gonna close that up until after everything is painted. Uh, I do still need to go ahead and finish up these front corner pieces and also the parts uh, to close up this skin here and line it up, trim it to fit along here. I wanna get that done before uh, we paint. Now, the other thing I did do today on this side and I'm gonna see if I can get time to do it today, but I'm not sure if we're gonna get into it today. Uh, but uh, as you can see, I opened up these holes. I need to clean them up a little bit more, uh, but I opened up these two holes. So now I can get a torque wrench, uh, my torque wrench in there or a socket, and also a wrench on the, on the nut, on the bolt on this side. So uh, much more easier access. Um, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and finish that last rivet there. Uh, and then I think I have one down here too. We need to get that one in. Uh, but then those are done. The trailing edge is done on this side. Um, and when the wing comes off, I'm gonna try to fix up this a little bit more. Uh, and then same with uh, this here. So we'll, we'll figure this all out as we get a little bit closer. But once we get this wing off, then I can go ahead and finish the door on this side and uh, call that done as well. Uh, we're gonna clean up this backside and I'm gonna, I bought some uh, uh, of that RV window sealant and that's what we're gonna use around all the windows and also around the roof. Um, some point down the road, we will make a fiberglass farin that goes right here and maybe across, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then uh, same thing for the back, uh, back here. Uh, at some point, I might make up a fiberglass fairing to go along this bottom edge, uh, but I, not right now. So, but we're getting there. So 
That's done for today. We're gonna go ahead and move on and see if we can't do some on the other side and uh, maybe pull that trailing edge off, get that trimmed up to, so I can access that similar to this side and uh, go from there. So that's the plan. Let's get back to work, guys. Hey guys, welcome back to Joe's RC Corner. And today we're gonna be back on the Cricut. And uh, yesterday we did a lot of work. Uh, well, we didn't get a whole lot done, but we did get the trailing edge on the inboard completed. So now we can start doing wiring from the wings down to the uh, front panel, uh, make sure all the switches work, lights and so on. Uh, also get the compass wired up to the EFIS. But <clears throat> got a special delivery. Okay guys, so welcome back from the intro. And like I said, uh, we got a uh, special delivery here. Uh, this, uh, so I was ordering this from uh, Texas Precision Engraven. Uh, my all aircraft need to have a data plate and um, I tried to make one myself did not come out well so I went ahead and I contacted uh, Texas Precision Engraven and Jamie uh, did a wonderful job um, he does laser etching uh, here and so all of this is laser etched but then you can see the rest of it is stamped and the reason for that being stamped is in a fire this may not be legible but if it's etched in there but the stamped will still be legible so in a fire in an accident this data plate has to be recoverable and it has to be legible after so that is why this data plate is stamped like that. So we're going to install this on the Cricut. And it's gonna go right back here on the tail of the aircraft. So I've already got my first hole in there. I'm gonna go ahead and Clico that in place. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, do the other uh, three and get that mounted and uh, she'll be officially an aircraft. So, let's go ahead and get that done, guys, and we'll be right back. Okay, guys, it's official. She has her data plate. Isn't that awesome, guys? Uh, ah, man, that is just, that's so cool, man. Thank you, Jamie, for... Uh, knocking that out so fast uh, she's now now officially an airplane there she's got her data plate so that's legal and uh, so now back to work on what needs to get done to make her fly now all right let's get to work guys okay guys so welcome back to the channel uh didn't do any time lapse or anything because uh just was trying to knock some stuff out so uh where we are right now is working more on wiring and I know it's a big mess of spaghetti uh, but we will be cleaning this up as we go here uh, right now went ahead and I added my uh, terminal block here for all of my EIS sensors so now everything from the engine is wired to this I do have to program the EIS so that it knows what's what uh, so we'll work on that uh, we do so we'll finish working that out. There's a couple more still here. So we got the left header tank, or left tank, right tank, uh, still need to get the uh, uh, wires to. And then I believe this last one here is a fuel flow sensor. So that's not in yet, and I'm not sure I'm gonna get that wired up yet, but we may connect a wire, run it down, and then tie it off uh, down over on the side. Um, so that way when I do install the flow sensor, uh, I'll have that uh, wire available and very easily um, connected. So we're going to try to get all of this, rest of this all cleaned up here. Um, get it all neat. Still have to wire up my comm radio. Uh, my flap uh, lever needs to be wired up. Uh, I need to start getting my hoses uh, for my uh, uh, for my uh, airspeed, altitude, and so on. So I need to get that going. Uh, and then uh, those also, the reason why there's a T is the 
EIS is a backup uh, for my main screen here, so I'll be able to get that uh, data also over there. So I need to wire that up, uh, hose that up as well, plumb it. Um, but, uh, and then also still have to get my current sensor wired in. Uh, got to decide where I want to put that, uh, on what side. So we'll figure that out as well. Um, but uh, yeah, so everything is hooked up now uh, for that. Uh, we're gonna finish up a few more things, get that all completed and buttoned up, and whatever leads that need to come down will come down, which will need to go to the wing because we need to get those wired as well still. So that's what we got working, guys. Uh, she's moving along and uh, we'll get there uh, one step at a time. So uh, keep building, keep flying, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye now.